Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about baseline court positioning. In other words, where players position themselves when playing baseline tennis. And I'm not only going to refer to high level players, I'm also going to tell you where you should position yourself at the recreational level. But generally speaking, at the high level, players position themselves one to two meters behind the baseline. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, why are you laying on the ground? Because I want to demonstrate what one to two meters are. And the way I'm going to do it is by marking where my head is. I'm going to mark that with my hand and now about half of me is to about right here. So I'm going to leave my racket here and I'm going to keep my finger on this line and I'm going to demonstrate what one to two meters are. So it's going to be an area approximately from here to here. So guys, I'm going to put these two balls down. This one is for two meters and this one is for one meter. So in this area right here is where high level tennis is played. And you're probably thinking, hey Nick, this seems to be like a defensive position. Aren't players always trying to be closer? They're trying to stand closer to the baseline or inside the baseline in some cases. Well, all you gotta do is go on YouTube and pull up a Wimbledon match in the modern era. And what you will see that the court is used up mostly behind the baseline. Yes, you're gonna see grass used up in this area right here, but that is not because players stand there, it's because that's where they land after the serve. Baseline tennis, even on grass where it's super aggressive, is still played one to two meters behind the baseline. And it's easy to tell if you watch where the grass is used up in Wimbledon. Now, does this mean that players are always standing in this area? No, it does not because baseline positioning is fluid. It should be fluid at the high level, but it should also be fluid at the recreational level. Now let me give you one example. So for example, if I'm playing with a 12 year old kid, I'm not gonna stand back here. I'm gonna stand inside the baseline. Now what if I'm playing against a division one college player? I'm not gonna stand here. I'm gonna stand approximately one to two meters behind the baseline. Now why is this the case? Because where I'm standing in relation to the baseline depends on the penetration of the incoming ball. So obviously juniors uh, have shots that don't penetrate the court very fast especially if they're very young so it makes absolutely no stand sense for a player like me to stand back there i can easily play the balls from here those balls are not going to overwhelm me however if i play against a division one player who hits the ball with a lot of penetration if i stand here i'm going to be in a world of trouble so naturally i need to give myself more time and stand approximately one to two meters behind the baseline because from here i got plenty of time to take full cuts at the ball. So what does this mean for you at the recreational level? Well, you're gonna have to be fluid in your baseline positioning and base it on the penetration of the incoming ball of your opponent. And this is something that can change even in the course of one match. Because let's say your opponent starts off the match with playing very defensively and very tight. You might be playing inside the baseline when that is the case. And now all of a sudden your opponent starts to loosen up. They start going for shots. And now you're catching balls off your shoelaces here. Naturally, you're gonna start to back up and give yourself a little bit more time for those balls that are now coming in with more penetration. Now, what if you ignore what I just said and you don't make your baseline positioning fluid and you make your baseline positioning always the same. And usually what a lot of people fantasize about is being able to play right on top of the baseline. And this is gonna be a very difficult task to master because playing tennis from here not only depends on the incoming ball from your opponent to be less penetrating, it also requires you to have better footwork, better timing, and better hands. And this is why generally speaking, at the elite level, you will see most players play one to two meters behind the baseline. However, there are gonna be some players, especially on the WTA Tour, who like to play very close to the baseline, and in some cases on the baseline. And interestingly, what you will notice on players such as Radvanska or Kerber is that when they play always from this area, they are forced to abbreviate their strokes because of it. And just picture Kerber going into her squatting position or lunging positions and deflecting balls uh, back at the play. And this is just her game style, the way she likes to play, but it forces her to shorten the strokes. It works for her, it comes very natural to her. But if you try to adapt something like this, you would have to have the footwork of Kerber, the hands of Kerber, and the timing of Kerber. And unfortunately, most players do not possess those skills. So when I'm coaching players, if I can see some of those natural tendencies that are very good, for example, the young player, Emma Raducanu, she seems to play extremely well from very close to the baseline because it does suit her game style. It suits her athletic abilities. It works fine for her. But a normal player, let's say with normal athletic 
capabilities like myself for example I would not be able to play from here because I do not possess exceptional footwork exceptional timing or exceptional hands for that matter and by the way most players do not possess those skills so for the vast majority of players it makes a lot more sense that when we're talking about the high level and when the ball has a lot of penetration is that we stand approximately one to two meters behind the baseline because from here we are not forced to take the ball super early we have a little bit more time to take a full cut at the ball and be aggressive because in fact what you're doing when you're standing too close and it doesn't suit your game style you're actually playing defensive tennis even though you're standing closer you can play much more aggressively if you backed up because from here you can take a full cut at the ball and you can't do that when you're standing inside the baseline and something that's really interesting when it comes to baseline positioning is the comparison between the ATP players and the WTA players so WTA players generally stand closer to the baseline as I mentioned before some stand extremely close to the baseline if not on the baseline or inside the baseline in some cases and this is just something that's impossible to do on the ATP tour so for this to make sense you need to understand how players are timing the ball so what happens on the ATP tour is that there's a lot of spin being produced and the way the ball behaves when it does have a lot of spin on it is that once it bounces, it has a more vertical flight path in other words the ball will not shoot through the court like this it will go very vertical when it's hit with heavy topspin now what the ATP players will do is they are forced to take this ball on the rise they cannot wait for the ball to get to the apex and then fall down because by the time the ball comes down they will be too far back in the court and it would play extremely defensive tennis from back there so players do take the ball higher they don't take it around the waist or below the waist they take it higher but they do take the ball on the rise now WTA players do this as well but some WTA players take the ball a lot earlier and they can do that because the trajectory of the ball after it bounces is not as vertical the balls have a tendency to be more flat and the ball is flying at this trajectory so the ATP tour the ball flies a little bit more vertical on the WTA tour the ball flies a little bit more flat so when this is the case if you were to take the ball lower let's say around your hip or even below the hip it's definitely easier when the ball is flying this way compared to this way often what players will experience if they try to take the ball off the balance if it has a lot of spin on it that they will frame it this is something that frequently happens even at the recreational level so what happens when the ball is flying very vertically and you try to take it very close to the balance is that the ball will catch the top part of your frame it won't happen however if the ball is flying more flat after it bounces then it is less likely to hit the frame it's going to go right in the middle of your string bag so it is for that reason that you see players like Kerber and Radvanska on the WTA tour but you never see players like that on the ATP tour now I know what you're getting ready to type how about Federer against Nadal at the Australian Open in 2017 yes it's true Federer was taking the ball earlier in that match towards the end of that fifth set when it was down 3-1 he switched his game styles somehow and all of a sudden he was playing more aggressive yes he did take the ball earlier but also he was standing closer to the baseline but a very important distinction he wasn't playing like Kerber and taking the ball right off the bounce he was taking the ball at his hip so the regular contact point for ATP players on average is somewhere above the hip better in that match was taking the balls around his waist so in that match he was able to pull off this type of timing and unfortunately I'm going to say a lot of recreational players saw Federer doing this in the match and they tried to copy it but I'm going to advise you against it if you happen to play at the higher recreational level where the balls are coming with some good penetration if you try to do what Federer did uh, you're going to have some problems now the reason I'm saying that you're going to have problems is because you most likely and this is a high likelihood that you don't have Federer's hands you don't have Federer's footwork and you don't have Federer's timing and Federer doesn't even have those things all the time it just happened to work for him in that particular match because he doesn't play like that all the time most of the time Federer just like any other player he's comfortable about one to two meters behind the baseline and this brings me to another very important point when we're talking about baseline positioning at the high level which is that players are not always in control of where they're standing first of all it's under your control of the opponent sometimes if your opponent is playing unbelievably aggressive there's naturally going to be a fluid baseline positioning where you start to back up also if the opponent is playing the opposite they're playing weak defensive they're playing short balls maybe they're tight naturally the players will move up however this is something that can change within one set they can change within 
one match because we all know the ups and downs of tennis and this is why you see so many different changes in momentum in matches at the high level and just picture when Nadal plays Djokovic in one set Nadal is up in the court he's playing aggressive and then all of a sudden in the second set Nadal starts to back up and all of a sudden it's Djokovic just playing more aggressive this is naturally what happens and these players have fluid baseline positioning just like everyone else so to summarize today's lesson we're gonna have three basic positionings in tennis there's gonna be a neutral positioning which is gonna be fluid as well your neutral positioning it's not necessarily one to two meters behind the baseline. It might be one to two meters inside the baseline depending on who you're playing with. That's gonna be your neutral positioning. Also, there's gonna be offensive positioning. It's gonna be defensive positioning. So naturally, let's say you're playing really aggressive from the baseline and your opponent drops the ball short. You, of course, are gonna start getting closer and closer to the net and you're gonna play these short balls very aggressively. At the same time, when your opponent starts playing very aggressive, you're naturally gonna start getting more into a defensive positioning way behind the baseline. Now this defensive positioning can be literally at the back fence, which will depend on your own game style. If you're more of a defensive player, uh, this is gonna be something that's gonna be very common. Just picture Nadal where he's standing on the return of serve. You can't even see him on the camera. He's standing next to the Lions judges. He is naturally uh, more of a defensive player, even though we all know that Nadal can play very aggressive as well, where you will rarely see Roger Federer standing back here. That is true because he is naturally more of an offensive player, but by no means is a position like this in the court wrong because sometimes, depending on the type of player, players will play all the way from back here. So guys, when it comes to baseline positioning, as I explained in today's video, there are gonna be many variables and there are gonna be many different factors that are gonna determine where you position yourself along the baseline. But one thing is fact is that your baseline positioning has to be fluid if you wanna have any success from this part of the court.